Not just any old dovetail, but a sliding dovetail. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I've had a lot of people asking me in the last few weeks about sliding dovetails. Um, I used them in the video uh, where I was building a coffee table with the Crafted Podcast, uh, Johnny and Zach. And that was a lot of fun, but people are asking, you know, how do you do dovetails? This is something that I uh, do quite often uh, for drawers and carcasses, anytime where I want a shelf to be supported. So number one, it doesn't pull out of the carcass. And number two, it has the vertical support that you would have with the dado. So I want to do a quick video on showing the simple process of making a sliding dovetail. It's really not as hard as it looks. So what I want to do is put quarter inch deep tails on this side so that they will slide into this board down here. Uh, so I like to start with the tails um, because it's a lot easier to develop the tails and then put exactly what you have into the second board, um, for my sake that is. And really, a lot of people get very bent over out of shape of how deep they need to go or what size they need to be. And I'd say, you know, that looks good right there. So I want my tails to be that deep, about a quarter inch. And I'm just going to run a line all the way along here. This line then becomes what will actually seat against the second piece of wood. So this is how deep these tails will penetrate into that second piece of wood. So I'll mark these out. And then uh, once I have that line developed, I want to set a fence on here. So I have this scrap piece of uh, red maple. And I'm going to set it right on that line, getting really darn close to it, hold it in place, tap down with a hold fast. And then once it's in place with the hold fast, I'm actually going to tap it just a little bit to align it exactly to where I want it to be. And this is the critical part because you really want this line to be exactly the same as the line on the other side. Otherwise you'll have a gap on one side or the other. So once this is in place, good and solid, then I'm going to grab my dovetail plane. And all this is is a plane with a bit of an angle on it. What this angle is determines how steep of a tail you have. Um, I think that this one's like a one to six. But uh, yeah, um, it's really, I just bought this one at a, actually I got this one on Craigslist. Um, and it's a fairly cheap plane. One of these days I might actually make one. They're not that difficult to make. But uh, for now, um, you can find them here and there. And uh, I'm sure you can find them on eBay. So then I'm just going to start going. And every pass it gets a little bit deeper. And then what I'm looking for my depth is I want this edge, the corner of the tail, to be a perfect corner. I want this to be a sharp corner. I don't want a flat spot on top of here. And I don't want this to go down farther. And normally what's going to happen is on the, you know, the far edge you're going to finish that off early. So on subsequent passes I need to actually stop before I get here because I'm not quite down deep enough here but I am here at the end. So I'm going to do a couple more. And just before getting there, I pull it out a little bit more. And I'm just looking for a bit of consistency from one end to the other, making sure that I have a really nice sharp edge on that tail all the way across. I think I'm good, except for right here. And one final pass, and that tail's good. So I'm going to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So here you can see what I'm talking about with it being tight on that corner. I don't want a flat spot on top. I want it to have a really nice sharp corner on there all the way across. But I don't want to go down too far that that corner starts propagating down the surface of the board. And there you can see how I now have a nice sharp tail on both sides. And it is ready to go in. This took me approximately, what, two to three minutes to do. So it is really not a hard and difficult process. So usually the most difficult part of this is actually transferring the marks from the tails to the board that it goes through. Normally you're going to have a line on the board where you want this shelf to stop at, you know, the top or bottom of the shelf to be. And so in this case, I'm actually just going to line it up to that line. And then I'm going to use a mark on the other side. And I'm just going to very, very lightly transfer that mark over. Because this mark isn't really that important for actually making the cut other than delineating where the two sides of this board will end up being. So the important thing here is actually finding out what the measurement is on the inside of these tails. So I'm going to slide this in and it is 0.519. I'm going to lock this down and then I'm going to pull out these calipers. So now they have this exact measurement of what the inside of that tail is. What I can do is bring that over here and transfer those marks 
to this board. And so I can go mark and mark. And those are the two marks that I now want to carry all the way across this. So I can set my square on here. I can put this on there. And I can draw this mark nice and heavy, actually. So now we have our marks where we actually need to cut back at an angle on either side, but we want that angle to match the angle of our tails. And this is what kind of gets some people um, a little confused. The other thing I want to do here is the mark that I used to measure the depth of my tail here, I want to keep that mark the exact same, and I actually want to mark the depth of it on these boards. And so this is my depth stop. How far down do I actually want to cut? So I want to put that on both sides so that I now know how deep I need to make the cut on either side of that tail. So now we have all of our stops and marks and cuts. What I actually want to do is come over here and take the iron out of this plane. And with the iron out of this plane, I now have the exact angle that I cut those at. And so what I can do is set this on here, I can clamp it down, and then I can use that as the slide to adjust my saw. Now in setting this up for the cut, I actually want to put the hold fast on here and lock this down in place. And then I'm gonna set this in here and I'm going to put it up against that mark. And here's where you get to make the determination about how loose or how tight this is. If you want this to be something that has to be hammered home and locked in place and it's there for the rest of its life, and you don't even have to worry about glue, then you go right on that line or just a hair inside of it. If you want it to be something that you can easily slide in and out of there repeatedly, uh, then you're actually going to want to go towards the outside of it, just a hair. So I'm gonna be keeping my fingers holding this against the slide of the plane, and I'm gonna try and keep my fingers in place and keep the saw moving in a straight and even motion all the way across. And then at this point, you also want to be careful that when you're cutting, you go all the way through so that any of the dust that was clogged up in the beginning can be discharged out of the saw when you reach the far side. If you're doing short little passes, all you're gonna be doing is clogging up the middle of the saw with the dust. So you actually wanna go all the way through on both strokes is that the dust can be ejected. So there's one side cut, and I'm gonna flip this all around and cut the other side, and then I'll show you how to remove that waste. Now that I have both sides of this tail cut down, what I actually wanna do is I want one more cut right in the middle, and I'm not gonna worry about this one particularly. This just makes it easier to remove the waste between them. So I'm gonna start on the far side, and then lower this back, and I'm gonna stay away from that depth mark. I don't wanna go down quite to it. But I do want to make a mark all the way across, and that will allow me to remove this waste fairly quickly. And then I'm gonna come in with a chisel, not going anywhere near the depth mark yet, just taking out the majority of the waste. Slowly coming through, I don't wanna hit it too heavily because I don't wanna break off uh, the tails that I've created here. So I'm just kinda working through and removing the majority of the waste. Now I stop here, I don't wanna go all the way through the other side, otherwise I blow that out. And I'll come back around and just tap out this side. You can see how that cut in the middle makes it very easy to remove the waste in between. So now I can come in with the router plane and get it close to that stop mark. And the, the tip of the router plane, I can work it right into the corners and make sure that I clean those out really well. And now I want to actually put it right into that marking gauge line, the depth stop. We're just a hair shy. Lock it down there. And clean that out. You notice I'm not going all the way through to the other side. I'm stopping shy so that I can turn around and I can come back at it from the other side and clean it out from there working the tip of the router into those corners. I'm just using a half inch blade in here because it fits nicely, but sometimes you might want to use a quarter inch blade. Now we can test our fit and see how we are. In this case, it's a little bit tight. I'm not quite down to depth. I need to go a little bit farther. So we will set the blade a little bit lower.
and cut it again. Now sometimes if I didn't cut down quite deep enough, I'll come in with a marking gauge knife, or a marking knife, and I'll sever those fibers right at the bottom. Sometimes that saw can't reach all the way back into that corner. So, we can do it with a knife. so after doing that, we can actually then go through and test the cut. And this one is going to fit rather nicely, actually. And there you go. Really nice, tight, sliding dovetail. And uh, all the way across. I'm very happy with that. And you can see how tight and clean of a uh, dovetail that is. And so that's a really nice, solid joint, um, especially for shelves and a carcass or something of that nature. So it's not going to pull out in either direction. It still holds the support that a dado would. And I really like how that comes out. A very simple process. Um, even with videoing, this took me about 10 minutes. Um, without videoing, I could probably pop these out in about five minutes a piece um, in this particular wood and size. Uh, for the dresser, the ones that I did that were about 24 inches long, uh, those took me about uh, 10 to 15 minutes a piece in, red oak, in white oak. Um, so they're not that hard and they really don't take that much time at all. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. This was a, a fun one. Um, a sliding dovetail with hand tools really is not that difficult. It's a fairly simple process and there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. This just happens to be the way that I do it most commonly. It's a simple project. It works great, has a lot of usability and function, and just an all around fun joint to make. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit like and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, I want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel keeps going. If you'd like to find out more about that or help out, you can find out right down here. Also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.